people can start losing weight just by making better decisions. Motivation is driven from the inside out. Use flexibility as a tool. Rely on structure when it's helpful. This is where we discuss the possibilities. Hey guys, welcome back to the Diet Doc Life Mastery Podcast. I'm Dr. Corey Probst, and I'm here today with a very special guest. Her name is Sarah Williams, and she is the owner of the Diet Doc Cincinnati. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Nice to be here, Corey. Yeah, I'm so, it, this will be fun. I'm excited to ask you some questions. This is part of our uh, coaching clinic series of this podcast, and I thought who better to bring on than, than someone who is becoming literally a master coach and moving up in the world of, of fitness and nutrition. So thank you. Yeah, Sarah, if you don't mind, tell our listeners how you, how you got started. Sure, absolutely. Well, it all kind of starts um, the way I grew up. Uh, growing up, I always knew where a large amount of my food came from. Mm. Uh, my dad was a hunter, so we grew up eating lots of venison and um, just meat that he brought in. We grew up on Lake Erie, and so he was always bringing perch and walleye and all kinds of food to the table um, that we exactly knew where it came from. And same thing with my mom. She had a huge garden, and um, as kids, you know, when she'd be making dinner, we'd be running out to the garden to pick ingredients for dinner, whether it be onions or basil or tomatoes. Wow. So, so for the most of my life, I've known where my foods come from. And then growing up, uh, moving on, getting married, my husband and I have a large piece of property, mm -hmm. and. So we kind of decided to get into it ourselves. So we do the same thing where we raise a lot of our own food. A few years ago, someone gave us a few chickens and we kind of just started from there. Um, you know, just to get those fresh eggs was so awesome. Um, yeah. we, we now raise our own grass fed beef and um, pigs and we have an apple orchard and all that stuff. So that um, is kind of where my passion for food came from. And now I have four kids. So it's even more important now for me mm -hmm. to focus on, on eating healthy mm -hmm. and to fit it into our lifestyle. And so that's kind of the fire that has fueled me into the field of nutrition. My background is in sports medicine and athletic training. So I, I have my degree in athletic training. I have my master's in sports medicine. And so um, in grad school, I was working as a graduate assistant and traveling with sports teams. And the coaches had no idea how to feed these teams and these kids. So I was the one that was planning all their meals and planning where we would eat and um, what would be on the menu for them and going to the store getting, you know, their snacks. So um, I always have that background of food and nutrition. And so now um, I, I teach my clients how to eat healthy, but to fit it into their lifestyle so that they can fuel their body and meet their goals. And um, so that kind of led me down a path of, of joining the diet doc and getting to do what I love every day. <laughs> wow, you, gosh, you bring such a different and eclectic experience to your clients. I I don't know that there's anyone else in our company, and maybe there is, but who has that that strong of a background in actually like cultivating the food and being a part of the land that brings it to us. And that is that is really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. How did you four kids? And you're raising your own food and the animals that make the food for you. How are you, how do you do that as a fitness and nutrition business owner? Um, it takes a lot of structure, a lot of, <laughs> my days are very, very structured and I try to optimize my time every single minute of the day. Um, whether even even during my times of relaxing and, and playing with the kids, it's still in a in a 
a plan, an idea of this comes next in my day, you know? So having that organization and that flow to the day has really helped me, especially, you know, Monday through Friday when I'm focusing on my clients and work in general. So it's definitely a learning process though. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So with your, with your clients, do you find that they're motivated by and interested in kind of where you came from with food and do you see them like do you share that with them your history with food um and and what effect do you see that having on them yeah absolutely in fact a lot of times that's kind of how i i start talking to people um i'm not i don't have a background in in sales or business or anything yeah. like that so i never was really comfortable with like i would say a pitch so i have mm -hmm. found that just um, stepping outside of my comfort zone and talking to people about, you know, having my kids and raising my own food and just knowing where my food comes from. That alone just gets people so interested in what I'm doing and just learning more about me. And um, I think that's something that a lot of my clients are even interested in because sometimes I'll have some of them ask me, you know, gardening tips and yes. just like that like what do you do with this and that and so um, I think it's definitely something that benefits my clients and it gets them excited about it as well well I see it as you helping them to really develop an education around where does my food come from and am I actually fueling my body in a way that's gonna net me the best energy and if I am working towards fat loss am I Am I putting foods in my body that are going to help make that difference? Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's so I, important. I love, Sarah, that, you know, and this is something that we teach within the diet doc. It, it, yeah, it does come down to you being able to make money to make a living and to serve your family and things like that. At the same time, you know, all of our clinicians are, they are very grounded in being able to provide a valuable service to their clients and help them to change their lives in a meaningful way, right? Um, my question to you is, what do you feel like the, the primary contributing factors are that you've seen in your client's success? I think a lot of my client's success just comes from being being their support, being their partner, and just watching them kind of just grow and identify, you know, oh, I didn't realize that this was a carb. I had somebody the other day that didn't realize that fruits and vegetables were carbs. And so just those little light bulbs going off and those little learning experiences, I feel like those are just so important. And, and I think that's one of the main things, you know, to answer your question. Yeah, it's, it's oftentimes when we're in a space of being an expert around nutrition or around fat loss, it's difficult sometimes to back up all the way to the place where we didn't know what carbs were and <laughs> we didn't know that fruits and vegetables were carbohydrates. And so what may seem very simple to us when a client starts with us, it's, it can be monumental for them. Like light bulbs are going off and they're, you know, having aha moments all over the place. And, you know, I see what you're doing, not just from the nutrition perspective, because you're part of my mindset and motivation, you know, coaching, yeah. uh, cohort, yeah. which is yeah. super fun. But you're combining that the the mental and the emotional piece with the actual practical piece here's what carbs are here's what protein is you, you know here's where the different sources that fat come from what difference have you seen that piece of it make for your clients that piece just adding in um the motivation and mindset piece is that what what you mean yeah yeah, that's been huge. That's made a huge impact in um, my coaching because before, like you said, it was more of focusing on, okay, this is a carb. This is what you should eat. This is how much. And it was very much more on the science side of things, mm -hmm. which I think 
great, but I didn't have a good knowledge or background in um, the motivation, the mindset, just being more aware, being more mindful. I didn't have a, a good knowledge base in that area. And so that has really helped me even just in my personal life, just to become more aware, um, to slow down. And I think <laughs> those techniques that we've been learning in your course have been helpful for uh all of my clients, you know, as well as myself. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so interesting to me. I just literally before we got on um, this podcast together, I, I had a fairly long conversation with a new client of mine who, you know, he, he is pretty significantly overweight. He probably has about 100 pounds to lose. And he's asking me these very practical questions that you're talking about, like, um, you know, what about the packaged meals in the grocery store? Like, are those good? Should I buy those? Um, and as we're going over the sample meal plan that I had created for him, for example, he's like, well, my wife and I really like fish. Like, can we eat fish? And it's these, of course you can eat fish. Yes. But it's, pretty clearly the conversation turned to oh and it's it it i probably should let you know that i have binge i binge eat and have done that for most of my life and you know i i feel like and i think that you would agree with me that without a level of knowledge and expertise in being able to meet a client where they are from that perspective and to empathize with them about what and how that's affected their lives it's very difficult then to just focus on food and nutrition and what to eat because ultimately this piece of it's going to affect this piece of it right yeah absolutely you have clients who you're working on both with at this point and how do you do that yeah i would say probably more than half of my clients I'm working on both mm -hmm. because it just goes hand in hand. And as soon as people find out that I'm a motivation and mindset coach, I feel like a lot of times that seals the deal because they're <laughs> like, wow, that's such a huge part of it. I never realized it. And so once we start digging in and just really focusing on like what you taught us about um, strength based coaching and, and focusing on their strengths mm -hmm. and, and really honing in on those as well as, um, you know, the nutrition of picking this out in the grocery store and reading mm -hmm. this label, combine it all together. It just, it takes that almost like holistic approach where you just cover a lot of ground and it's, it creates those habits that are going to last a lot longer. Yeah. I, that's a very, very good point that without that component and without the food and nutrition and the practical things, um, it's not necessarily going to last. It's not necessarily going to be sustainable unless they're understanding themselves better and why they do what they do and why they choose certain foods and why they gravitate toward food when food isn't what they need, for example. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Sarah, I remember one of the first conversations we had after you started, or it may have been before you started the, the mindset and motivation coaching and it was all about empathy yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> do you remember that conversation <laughs> i yes very clearly i still remember it. i have notes written down actually right by my desk <laughs> to help me with that because it's still something i'm working on well and so what struck me was that i had always experienced you as a very empathic empathic person and so for you to come to me and say yeah I don't have any empathy and uh, I really need to work on that and I know how many clients you have and I have a sense of um, how much they appreciate and value you as that support person and that coach and so to hear you say that just kind of blew my mind but can you talk a little bit about that and kind of your journey and maybe building that skill? Sure. Yeah. 
You know, empathy is one of those things where I feel like in general, I've always tried, I've always been able to be sympathetic and, and show sympathy. But as far as empathy goes, I just feel like maybe I would think about it in my head, but I never was able to verbalize it or mm -hmm. just express it, I guess. So just to hear you list out, you know, the steps of, um, you know, acknowledging, because I'm the type where I would always just try to fix the problem. Okay. You know? Here, the, the client would come to me with a problem and I would just immediately start firing off, try this, try that, try this. <laughs> yeah. And so that's, that was what I was guilty of. And you helped me to learn that that's not always going to help them, you know, being more empathetic, um, acknowledging what's going on, sharing a similar experience that you've gone through, mm -hmm. helping them to realize that you can truly relate to them. Mm -hmm. you know, has helped me so much and I've seen so many of my clients just open up because of mm. that open up to me it's like it's like immediately a wall comes down and they don't feel as guarded they just feel kind of relaxed and safe and and like they can trust me more I think yeah yeah okay I just got like full body goosebumps as you were talking <laughs> that's good <laughs> yeah, it's it's a what I imagine your clients probably experience in the room with you when you're having those conversations with them. Yes, because there there is this sense that wow, okay, I I am okay just the way I am right now, and that doesn't mean that there aren't things that I want, you know, that I don't want to improve. It doesn't mean that I'm going to stay right here and stay stagnant, but what you're allowing them to say is, okay, I'm acceptable, I belong right here, right now, and I have these things that I'd like to work with you on, Sarah, and you are clearly the person that's going to be able to do that for, with, for and with me. Yeah. Right. Gosh, you listed so many things that um, uh, if you're listening, like, go back and <laughs> take notes. Because <laughs> those are all, that's like a huge long list of skills that uh, I think a lot of coaches come into the quote unquote practice of coaching without, you know, they may have had success in losing body fat themselves or helping a friend or they've competed and, you know, they, they placed really, really well. And then they decide, you know what, I'm going to be an online coach or I'm going to start a coaching business, but they haven't developed those very strength-based and empathy-driven skills in order to be able to serve their clients as best as possible. So yeah, Sarah, I, I really appreciate what you've said. And I would imagine that um, a lot of your success <laughs> as a coach comes down to having those and implementing them with your clients. But how about as a human? <laughs> <too. laughs> like have you seen it make a difference in your personal life with your family your kids yes 100 percent um especially with my kids because it's um it's one of those things where a lot of times you know with four kids we might be you know in a hurry like let's go you guys time to go get your shoes yeah. on that type of thing and then all of a sudden somebody falls and gets hurt <laughs> and then they're crying and it's this big thing. And I think in the past, I would be kind of more like, okay, let's go. You're fine. You're tough. Like, tough, toughen up. Okay. Now, now I think I'm a lot more empathetic. Like, wow, you know, I can tell that you're hurt right now. You're really experiencing some frustration. Let's sit down and talk about it. Let's, let's see what we can do to make you feel better. We're, we're not going to leave you. Don't worry. You know, just... Yeah. Showing that empathy um, of being able to relate to my kids. And if they're feeling frustrated about something, just to be like, yeah, that is frustrating. And it's okay to be frustrated. I, I would be frustrated too. And I've been there. And just to be like that a little bit more, I think has helped so much with that communication between myself and my children. Because like I said, in the past, in the way I was raised too, was more of just, you do what I say, you do it, no questions asked, let's go. <laughs> And so I think things are getting better. <laughs> well, so what's interesting about this, and I know there are moms listening who can really relate to your experience and, and they're, they, they just like perked up right now and they're like, oh, new strategy. Um, what's ironic about it is that when you stop 
and you take the time to acknowledge what's actually occurring and not push your own agenda at that point, like hurry, hurry, come on, let's go, and just kind of gloss over whatever is right there in the moment, things actually move <laughs> faster. You know? Yes. I, <laughs> because your kid isn't like, and they're not necessarily doing this consciously, but they they need to feel like mom cares. Like mom sees what's happening here. They're not logically thinking that, but that's what's occurring in their bodies when they're feeling threatened or feeling hurt or feeling whatever it is. So <laughs> that's the irony yeah. of it. And you're like, you've you found that formula, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah, I thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, do you have any like parting words for our listeners? Like if there was an actionable step that someone who really wants to just take, take one, one step to shift, like shift their trajectory of health, what would you have them do? That's a good question. And I, I think it honestly depends on the person, but um, if I had to, say one thing it would be to just slow down just slow down because I I just took a big deep breath when you said that (laughs) (laughs) because whether you're talking about nutrition or fitness or just motivation a lot of times we get so focused on the goal and getting there as fast as we can that people don't take time to enjoy the process to learn and I think that is the the biggest takeaway that I try to teach my clients and and so that's what I'd like to share oh I love it I love that so much guys you didn't hear it (laughs) slow down learn to embrace the process because it's between the beginning and the achievement of that outcome that you're looking for where the most growth and learning and shifts and changes are going to occur and you might miss them so yeah. Awesome. Sarah, where can people find out more about you? What, you know, tell us where would, where can we find you? Sure. Yeah. Um, my website is Sarah Williams, nutrition.com. And my email is Sarah Williams at the diet doc.com. So I would, uh, say those are the best ways to find me. <laughs> awesome. And you're on social media. I yes. see your posts on Instagram. Yes. So they're good. Yes. Yep, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, Sarah Williams Nutrition. Sarah Williams Nutrition. Awesome. Well, yes. thank you again, Sarah. I just have yeah, to thanks say for having me. I enjoy being your, your colleague and having you on the team and in this family. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. That's great.